Hi all of you all. Starting with the first chapter on magnetism. Right, very simple chapter, interesting. Let's go ahead quickly. In magnetism, the first thing, in the earlier days, okay, in Asia Minor, Magnesia, we had pieces, okay, pieces of, of stones. They were called lodestone at that time, which had certain properties of attraction and direction. Okay, we call it as an attractive property and a directive property. So my first answer in this chapter of magnetism is this. First, the properties of those pieces were as follows. They used to attract magnetic substances and when suspended freely, you tie a thread suspended freely, it comes to rest in the geographic north-south direction. So when suspended, when left out freely, they come to rest in the geographic north-south direction. And these pieces were called as lodestone and they were found where in Asia Minor Magnesia, okay, before Christ, way back. So they were said to be lodestone. All right, fine. Uh, talking more about these pieces. Also, the pieces which were obtained from this earth's crust, later on they were said to be natural magnets. And remember, these natural magnets, they were irregular, shapeless. Second, they were weak in nature. They were not strong magnets. The attractive power was not that strong. It was weak. So what we did was, we gave them regular shapes and we put some artificial management into these. We used our brains and we gave them shapes according to our requirement. And that led to the advent of different size and shapes of magnets, artificial magnets called bar magnet, horseshoe magnet, magnetic compass, etc. according to our requirements, right? So can I say the artificial magnets were eventually made with the help of natural magnets by giving certain, you know, physical changes uh, according to our requirement in them. All right. Also remember, there were few properties apart from what I've written. When I talk about a bar magnet, okay, we made an, an artificial magnet called a bar magnet. The two bar magnets, I'm getting close to each other. If a north pole and a north pole comes, can I say there will be repulsion? Because the like poles will repel. But if, if I take another magnet with a north and a south, can I say there will be attraction? That means one more property can be stated as the unlike poles attract, the like poles repel. So two properties I've already written. They have the attractive property. They can attract the pieces of ma the magnetic pieces. Okay, the pieces of iron or nickel. They can attract them. This was the first property. The second is the directive property. When I leave them suspended freely with a thread, they come to rest in the geographic north-south direction. And the third was the like poles repel and the unlike poles attract. One more property you can say, if you keep on breaking this magnet into the smallest, the tiniest of the piece, still it will have two poles. So we call them as bipolar. Bipolar, you cannot separate the two poles at all. So even the smallest, the tiniest of the piece which we obtain in a magnet still has how many poles? Two poles. So it is dual polarity or bipolar magnet. All right. So these were about the certain properties of magnets. Talking about certain characteristics and the first concept. The first concept is called magnetic induction. So let's start with that part. Magnetic induction.
Now, what exactly is magnetic induction? Check. Um, if I take a magnet, north pole and south pole, a bar magnet, I take a nail. Okay. If I get a nail very close to the north pole, what happens is the north pole induces, that's the word, induces some magic spell. The north pole induces an opposite polarity to the nearer end. So this nearer end of the needle, which is a magnetic substance, gets a south pole. And the farther end of the needle gets a north pole. That means if this is north, the nearer end becomes south. And can I say the unlike poles will attract. This needle will be clung, stick to the magnet. And, and when it sticks to the magnet, it looks something like this. There it is. Now I take another needle. So obviously this becomes south, this becomes north. When I take another needle, the same thing happens. This needle, the first needle acts, behaves like a temporary magnet. Because now it is attracted by the permanent magnet. So this becomes this needle for the moment, time being acts as a temporary magnet and it will attract, it will do the same thing. The nearer end of the other needle, the second needle will get a south pole, opposite polarity, farther end, north pole. And that's how you're going to have a group of needles which can actually be connected till the magnetic strength is restrained. Okay, once you lose the magnetic strength, then the needles, it cannot go lifelong. It also depends upon the strength of the bar magnet. However, can I say this is, this is temporary magnetism, right? And this process is called magnetic induction. So what is magnetic induction? Can I say magnetic induction is, is nothing but, okay, a magnetic substance, a magnetic substance getting magnetism getting temporary magnetism as long as as long as it is in physical contact with the permanent magnet once you remove this all the needles at the bottom they will droop down they will fall one by one beautiful it looks because if this this needle is removed eventually all lose their magnetism because now the main needle is not in touch the contact is lost with the permanent magnet Right? So that's induced magnetism and that's magnetic induction. Then there is a give reason which, need, which, which we need to uh, uh, nicely focus upon. There are two of them. The first one, induced magnetism is temporary. And second, uh, induction precedes attraction. Okay, induction precedes. Precedes means comes before attraction. Ah, it's obvious. Didn't I tell you? This magnet induces, okay, it, it's, it, it casts a spell on this substance and it induces the magnetism. It induces the attractive property, the opposite polarity. And after the opposite polarity has been formed, this will poop, cling to the magnet. And that is attraction. So can I say induction comes before attraction follows later. So induction precedes, comes before attraction. Induced magnetism is temporary. I have done it. Because once the contact is lost, each of the following magnetic substances lose their magnetism. And if they lose their magnetism, obviously it's not a permanent, permanent process. It's a temporary affair, right? All right, so this was, uh, you, can, you can number them. Uh, magnetism, the properties was my first answer. Talking about natural magnets, second answer. Induction, third answer. And these can come as give reasons as the fourth answer. All right, I talk about my next answer is about the magnetic field and the magnetic lines of force. Okay, the fifth one. I talk about magnetic field. The magnetic field, as I said. 
Now, what exactly is a magnetic field check? Then we will look at the definition. Okay. Now, I have placed a magnet out here. North pole, south pole. Yep. I get a needle, a magnetic compass somewhere in the vicinity out here. Right. Somewhere out here. Let's say. Uh, the compass, the magnetic needle, it points in the geographic north-south direction. Assume this is this is the north of the earth and let's say this is the south of the earth north pole and the south pole so at this point where the needle has been kept the needle rests in geographic north south because the needle is under the influence of one magnetic field which is the earth's magnetic field as i get the needle close i observe that the needle starts deflection deflecting in some other direction, not the geographic north-south, because, because of this reason, check. Ah, I can't see this actually, I made it for you all. This needle right now at this point, can I say it is outside, outside this circle, this circular region, that means the needle is under the influence, it is affected by only one magnetic field, right? Only one magnetic field and which is that magnetic field? Earth's oh, magnetic field. As I get the needle inside, it starts deflecting in some other direction. Because now, the needle when in, it is under the influence of two magnetic fields. One is the Earth's magnetic field, which is obviously there everywhere and second, it is the magnetic field of this bar magnet. So the needle is affected by two magnetic fields. As we get the needle closer, the deflection increases, the bending increases because it is strongly influenced by this bar magnet's magnetic field. And this field, the region in which the magnetic needle is influenced, experiences a pull, a force, in some other direction and it does not rest in north-south, it rests in some other direction. That field, that bloody field is called a magnetic field. So can I say what the hell is a magnetic field? It is the region, I am writing in short, okay, short. Um, it is a region in which a needle or a magnetic compass deflects in other direction other than the geographic north-south direction and that field is called a magnetic field and as we go close the strength of deflection increases because the, the strength of the magnetic field also increases because closer you move more is the strength of the magnetic field. Now the next portion the next part is about the magnetic field lines. There are two names to it. We call it as magnetic lines of force or magnetic field lines. Okay, these are nothing but the lines which look like this. I'll just make the last line from here. And it goes on fine. I just made one. Okay, these these lines which I've made are called magnetic lines of force. Now, what are they? They are the closed continuous curved lines. Closed continuous curved lines. Yep. Which are inside the magnetic field, which are inside the magnetic field, and they give the direction of the magnetic field at any point. Shit man, that was difficult. Ah, nope. Listen, can I say I'm very sure with this explanation that they are closed continuous lines inside the magnetic field such that you take any bloody point, yeah, you take this point. You draw a tangent at this point. A direction from north to south. Yeah, a direction, of course, because we know that these lines of force, they move, they run outside from North Pole to South Pole. So if you draw a tangent at this point, guys, yes, 
they will give you the direction of the magnetic field right that means that means if i'm talking about this point and i draw a tangent the direction will be this way if i take this point and draw a tangent direction will be this way so these are called tangents and what do these field lines give they give me the direction whose direction the magnetic field direction at any point in the magnetic field so these are called magnetic lines of force and we have certain properties we have certain properties of the magnetic field lines uh, let's start with property number one these lines are closed continuous curves first property second property uh, they run they originate from the north and they terminate to the south outside okay so can i say they originate from the north pole and they terminate they end at the south pole outside the magnetic field but inside they run from south to north and inside the magnet they run from south to north right the third pointer guys for you all they don't intersect each other they are very close but they still never cross each other because if the two lines would have crossed then at a point if a needle would have been kept the needle bloody would have been confused should i point here or should i point here here or here needle would have danced because of the bi direction so these lines such a thing is never observed in such a diagram so i can say i can say that these lines don't intersect each other the magnetic field is the strongest the the, the lines are very much crowded at the poles and at the center they are less crowded because the strength a bit decreases so the fourth pointer they are crowded at the poles and they are spaced out at the centers right and because the maximum strength is at the poles the fourth one the fifth point um this it is the same thing what i spoke few minutes back that at any point by drawing a tangent we can get the direction okay of the magnetic lines of force by drawing a tangent at any point in the field gives me the direction of magnetic lines of force you can't use the shortcut but i here i have um six pointer they are they they act as rubber bands elastic rubber strings six pointer they act as elastic rubber strings okay six points are more than enough yeah so uh, we spoke about the origination the termination no intersection the direction close continuous elastic rubber strings yeah one more point you can say that uh, parallel and equidistant field represents a uniform magnetic field so when the lines are parallel and equidistant something like this if the lines are like this they represent they represent such lines represent a uniform magnetic field a uniform magnetic field which is equidistant all right so till now we have studied awesome we have studied about six important things right which i have i've i've decorated the board with so just go through this and we're going to attack three more concepts my next answer is about the evidences of earth behaving as a magnetic field as a magnet okay so evidences of earth behaving as a magnet there are four properties or four evidences which tell me yes 
earth is actually a magnet the first evidence okay so this is my next answer evidences okay right uh the first evidence when a magnet is suspended freely it comes to rest in the geographic north south direction so suspend freely it rests in geographic north south direction now it is obvious that i'm assuming that this is earth in which we call this its axis is slightly tilted this we call it as geographic north and this we call it as geographic south so obviously i am assuming that when i keep a needle or any magnetic magnet when i suspend it freely it will come to rest in this direction in which the north pole of the magnet guys the needle or the north pole of the bar magnet will point towards the geographic north south pole will point towards the geographic south right i can conclude that earth earth on a whole behaves like a magnet in which in which the south pole is up and the north pole must be down <laughs> yeah now that's awesome listen earth is also a magnet and earth's magnet earth's magnet has south polarity up towards the geographic north and north polarity down towards the geographic south so can i claim claim thus north of my magnet and south of earth's magnet yes that was the attraction the unlike poles attract so first point second point uh, okay second evidence tells me oh uh, when a magnetic substance is buried when a magnetic rod is buried after some months it acts like a magnet obviously if i bury something inside the earth's crust right can i say there will be a magnetic induction there will be induction a magnetic induction as a result of which this will act as a north pole because can i say the south pole will induce opposite polarity so the nearer end will become north and the farther end will become south pole that's second property then one of my property will be one of my property will be uh at the poles the magnetic field lines the magnetic lines become vertical or if you place a magnetic compass it will be vertical at the poles vertical at the poles and at the equator the magnetic compass will be horizontal so i can say at the poles the magnetic lines or the magnetic compass becomes vertical okay they will be vertical this way so can i say they are they are perpendicular to the surface normal to the surface that is perpendicular to the earth surface and at the equator at the equator uh, these magnetic field lines or the needle the magnetic compass okay or magnetic lines of force are parallel to the surface they become horizontal remember this and the fourth evidence is about the neutral points now this is superb okay talking about the neutral points all right there are two ways i'm going to explain only one of them let's see okay earth this is called geographic south geographic north earth's magnetic field lines are parallel 
and equidistant and uniform. So if I'm talking about the magnetic lines of force of the earth, first, they are parallel, equidistant, and they are uniform. Let's say I have a bar magnet with me and I'm placing that bar magnet out here with the north pole of the bar magnet facing the geographic north, south pole of the bar magnet facing the geographic south. All right, let's assume that the magnetic field of the earth is uniform. It is same throughout. All right, it's same throughout. Okay, these lines of force, they originate from the north and terminate at the south. Let's say maximum coverage is only up till here. So north till south. All right. In this context, there are two points I obtain. I think one will be out here. Right. And one will be out here. At these two points, the pink lines and the green lines, check my colors. The pink and the green lines are equal in magnitude, same value, opposite in direction. So can I say this is like a clash of clan? They will cancel out each other. They will nullify each other. Who they? The Earth's magnetic field lines and the field lines which are made by the bar magnet. Right. So can I say at these two points, I call them as neutral points. Can I say the Earth's magnetic field and the magnetic field of the bar magnet, they will cancel out each other, neutralize each other. That means the net, the net resultant magnetic field at these two neutral points is going to be zero. So if you place a needle at these two points, the needle will rest in any direction because the needle is under the influence of none of the magnetic fields. Needle is not influenced by any magnetic field, zero magnetic field. Are you understanding? Zero magnetic field. All right. And if you talk about the other diagram, right, the other diagram. Again, I'm going a bit fast. These are the uniform magnetic field lines made by the earth. And now if I place our magnet out here with the south pole facing the geographic north. That was north pole facing north. North facing north, I get the neutral point sideways because the, the opposition is sideways. Check this guys, origination is from north to south. Right, one more. Now if you observe guys, listen now, please, 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 listen, please, listen. If you observe this, sideways, green and pink are in the same direction. If they are in the same direction, they can't cut out each other. No, no, of course not. Where are they both in the opposite direction? Y'all tell me, here, here, look at this. The green is going up. Green is going up. And the pink is coming down. Even from here, the pink is coming down and the green is going up. That means at the end positions, end on positions, somewhere out here and somewhere out here. Can I say again, the two fields will nullify the effect of each other and the net resultant magnetic field will be zero. So the neutral points are obtained at the end on positions. And in this, the neutral points are obtained on the sideways position on either side. So sideways end on. So north, uh, south pole facing geographic north end on positions, north pole facing geographic north sideways positions. That's what we get neutral points. So what are neutral points? Neutral points are those points inside the magnetic field of a bar magnet in which, in which yeah, the, the magnetic field of the bar magnet and the earth's magnetic field, they will cancel out each other and the resultant, the net magnetic field at those two points is zero such that if a needle 
is placed at these points, they will rest in any direction because they are not affected by any of the magnetic field. Yeah. So these were the four evidences which told me that yes, man, Earth acts as a magnet. So go through these evidences. Uh, one more thing, I've also written the properties of Earth being a magnetic field. Okay, the magnetic field of the Earth is uniform, equidistant, parallel, and they originate. The magnetic field lines of Earth, they originate, it's different, from geographic south. Why the hell do the green lines, the Earth magnetic field lines originate from the south? Because do you remember, I just told that Earth behaves like a magnet where the North Pole is down. Ah, that's awesome. So can I say the North Pole of the Earth's magnet is down and the South Pole of the Earth's magnet is up. And all the magnetic field lines originate from the North, terminate to the South. So even Earth, the concept is the same. It is not from South to North. It's still from North to South, right? Go through it. I will come back to the B part, quick. We're going to talk about an electromagnet. All right. An electromagnet looks something like this. There is a soft iron core. This is not a magnet, please. It's a magnetic substance. It's a soft iron core. And it has windings, okay? The turns of wire, coil around it. It's, it's connected. Come on here. Okay. Connected to a group of cells or battery. Okay. So when I switch on the current, this becomes positive, negative, right? The current starts flowing. It goes round and round. And the circuit is complete. This soft iron core, which is a magnetic substance, starts behaving as a magnet, as a temporary magnet. And it will have polarity. Obviously, if it behaves like a magnet, shouldn't it have a North Pole and a South Pole, right? So remember one thing, if I'm talking about this as the magnet, yep, this one, the, the wire is wound in this manner. And if you check from this side, if you observe from this side, the turnings of the wire, check, the current is going anti-clockwise. And when the current in the loop flows anti-clockwise, that polarity is said to be the North Pole. So I can say anti-clockwise current, conventionally we call the pole as a North Pole. And the clockwise, the, the pole in which the current, the side through which the current is flowing in a clockwise direction, we call it as the South Pole. Look, if I would have put this wire from back, from back, check this, the starting, this I have put it from frontier end, from back it would have gone this way. Take it to us. Oh, now this is clockwise. So if the wire would have gone from back, the polarity would have been, would have been South Pole, right? All right. I will say, as long as the current flows through the solenoid, we also call this wire, the turning as a solenoid. So as long as, as long as the current flows, this system acts like a magnet and it acts as a strong magnet, a, a, a temporary strong magnet, having obviously having polarities. When I stop the current, when the current stops, this system loses its magnetism. So can I say the magnetism remains until and unless or, a, or, or only up till the current flows in the circuit, right? Um, going on with the next part, how to increase the magnetic strength? I can also increase the magnetic strength of the system. First, to increase the magnetic strength, what I can do is, I can increase the number of windings of this solenoid. So increase number of turns 
और नंबर ऑफ वाइंडिंग्स ऑफ द सोलिनॉइड सेकेंड इंक्रीज द नंबर ऑफ सेल्स दैट इज कैन आई से इंक्रीज द करंट मोर द करंट स्ट्रॉगर इज द मैग्नेट एंड मोर द नंबर ऑफ वाइंडिंग्स स्ट्रॉगर इज द मैग्नेट राइट सो दीज आर द टू वेज ऑफ इंक्रीजिंग द मैग्नेटिक स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ दिस इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेट विच इज अ टेम्पररी मैग्नेट so we spoke about what is an electromagnet um how will we determine the north and the south poles the ways of increasing the power the strength of the magnet what are the uses of the electromagnet they are used in in many industries first to lift up heavy cranes during the constructions of buildings or bridges or roads heavy cranes second they are used to remove magnetic pieces from the wound of an injured patient they are used in electric bells all right electric bell uh, they are used in watches they are used in camera they are used in televisions okay so gadgets so these are few uses okay three or four of them are more than enough there are so many uses but these i think might suffice so this was about the electromagnet if i talk about the power which i supply out here remember it has to be a dc source direct current you cannot use an alternating current because if you use an alternating current if you use ac source this is the symbol of ac that is you connected to a socket 220 volt supply yes from our house if this system is connected to an ac source then what happens is there will be a frequency change 50 hertz 50 hertz i'm not get, getting into the depth of it right now just remember only a dc should be used ac should be avoided because there is going to be a change in the direction of the current so that will not make this work efficiently or properly we want the current in a specific direction i don't want to keep on changing the polarities the direction of the current so the ac source shouldn't be used all right and the last part if i talk about differentiate between electromagnet and a bar magnet the first one i can say electromagnet is a temporary magnet i'll just write short this is a permanent magnet second this is a strong magnet this is a weak magnet third polarities can be changed the polarity remains the same now what's that now obviously if i change the polarity of the cell or a battery so obviously the direction of current will change and if the direction of current changes this becomes north this becomes south that means i can say i can change the polarity of the magnet by changing the polarity of the dc source right in the bar magnet you can't do that it's going to be fixed north pole fixed south pole fixed all right strength can be changed according to the requirement strength of the magnet the electromagnet strength remains the same how can you change the strength here it is you can increase the strength or you can decrease the strength by 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 uh, playing with these two factors yeah by changing these two factors you can change the strength according to the requirement the purpose all right electromagnet can i say it loses its magnetism once the current stops loses the magnetism once 
current current is represented by i stops okay out here it does not lose its magnetism there is no current so five points to differentiate between an electromagnet and a bar magnet you also have different types of electromagnets one of them is an i shape this i have made as an i shaped electromagnet you can also have a horseshoe type of an electromagnet it will look something like this so we have a, a soft iron core yep and we have winding windings of the wire it goes on so plus minus enter now obviously in order to check okay in order to check the polarity what we do is we observe it from here my eyes my eyes should be from down because whatever the face of the magnet is that will help you to determine the polarity so your eye should be out here looking upwards and if i check it's coming from out it's coming from out it's it's going this way outside outside so when i take it towards us i think that's clockwise okay i'm repeating in this direction it's going from here and if i turn it towards you all it goes in a clockwise direction and if it's in a clockwise direction wouldn't this be south pole this would be north pole clockwise is south anti clockwise is north you should only focus on single winding single wire and uh, uh, along the face your eye should be at to determine the polarity